I'm Anne Louise from Minerva, and I'm here today to sew along with you this rather delightful dress, Simplicity 1800, an amazing fit pattern. This pattern features three fabulous options, a skirt in two lengths, three different sleeve variations and two different necklines, and it includes three different size options, slim, average and curvy. It features a slim fitting square neckline bodice, front pleats, pockets and back darts for an extra flattering look. Today we are sewing through view C with knee length skirt and longer sleeves. It can be made in oodles and oodles of different fabrics. Of course everything we talk about today is available on Minerva right now and will be linked down below and will pop up throughout this video for your ease of shopping. We are working with this rich red John Caldor Duchess satin fabric. This is a heavier weight satin with a glorious lustre which is going to provide a more structured look to our project today. We'll be back stitching the beginning and end of our stitch lines. This is a pattern with varying seam allowances but we'll talk through those as we go. We also have this anti-static lining as when I was pulling the material off the ironing board I heard the familiar crack of static that seamstresses dread. We'll also need a matching zipper, thread and hook and eye. With a pattern like this one that has so many different pieces that need to fit correctly, it's, into, it's important to mark everything. So for all us notch skippers out there, this may be the time we actually pay attention to the pattern. After all our pieces are cut, we are preparing to stay stitch the bodice front and back necklines to make sure no one gets any ideas about pulling out of shape while we're being sewn. Also, we are marking the darts on our back bodice and back skirt pieces. Now we are sewing our darts on the back bodice pieces, making sure all the marks line up. We sew upwards towards the neckline, tapering the stitching off at the end of our darts to prevent any weird and awkwardly placed bubbles. We can't back stitch the top of the darts, however, like any well-written TV show, all the loose ends should be tied off at the end. We now attach our front bodice and side bodices together, gently easing the side front into the centre front piece. This may take some time and pin adjustment, however as long as at the end of the day all the notches line up and the edges are even, we should be good to go. Sew the princess seams together with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, carefully making sure nothing gets caught. If in doubt, baste it. Princess seams can be a little tricky, but the result is definitely worth it. If you're working with your more lightweight creeps or charmuses, I would definitely recommend basting together first. Once we've finished sewing our princess seams, we're going to clip them and then press the seam allowance towards the centre front. This is our bodice so far. We're then going to repeat the steps we've done in our lining fabric with the same seam allowance. We now form the front pleats, which took me a while to master. However, you're eventually looking for two knife pleats pointing towards a central inverted box pleat. As long as it's even on both sides and is the same width of your central bodice piece, you're doing great. 
I found it easier to have the pattern piece out near the skirt front so I could keep track of which pieces get folded where and where my pleats were. After we have neatly arranged our pleats, we baste into place. We're now stay stitching one inch every side of the dots marked on the skirt and then clipping to the dot to make sure it will sit smoothly on us. We're now lining up our pocket facing right sides together with our front skirt, matching notches and dots. We then sew the pocket facing onto the skirt front, stopping the stitching at the marked small dot. Sew with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. After sewing, press the pocket and seam allowance away from the skirt. After clipping the curved seam, we're also going to clip to the small marked dot on the front skirt piece. After the pocket facing seam has been pressed and clipped, we understitch the seam allowance to the pocket facing to prevent the pocket facing rolling forward. We now reinforce the front yoke at 5 8 of an inch from the edge one inch each side of the marked dot. After reinforcing it, we will also clip to the marked dot. We are then pinning the front yoke to the pocket and skirt front, matching notches, edges and dots. We then sew the front yoke and front skirt pieces together with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, pivoting at our marked dot where our dot is at the join of the pocket facing. Don't forget to reinforce the dot section by back stitching to make sure that stitch line is good and strong. We then base down the section where the front yoke, pocket and skirt front all overlap. Pin together the bodice front and skirt front right sides together matching the seams. We then sew the bodice and skirt right sides together with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is where we start to differ from the pattern instructions. <gasps> an amazing fit pattern gives some really great instructions for how to fit the dress to your specific shape. However, I've already made a mock-up and I know that it already fits me really well, so I don't need to make any adjustments.
Now we have an entire front section, we start on the back. We sew the two darts in the back of the skirt in the same way we did for the darts in the back of the bodice, starting at the bottom and slowly tapering off at the end. After all our darts on our back section are pressed towards the centre back, we pin the back bodice and back skirt together at waistline matching the darts and notches and sew right ties together using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. We now gather together our front and back dress pieces, making sure all the empire seams are pressed upwards. We line up the notches on back and front side seams, lining up the empire seams as well. We are also repeating this step on our lining bodice pieces. We then sew the side seam with an inch seam allowance. Our wonderful makers here at Minerva all agree that this is an excellent pattern to have in the stash because if you've got brand new shiny fabric you don't want to wait around to make a mock up. With this pattern it offers different cup sizes and different skirts depending on your shape. Make sure to check the measurements on the actual pattern pieces before diving in. This is our progress so far, our front and back sections attached. Now I just want to make some adjustments to the pleats. As you can see, the weight of the fabric is pushing the pleats at a slightly unflattering angle for me. So I'm going to make a little adjustment to our pattern. I'm going to sew the pleats down just about 8cm from the bodice, with a bit of top stitching, which will make a nice little style detail, and make it a little more flattering for my figure. We now attach the lining to the bodice neckline, first sewing the centre front with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, clipping and understitching, then flipping the lining inside the garment and with wrong sides together, stay stitching the lining and the bodice together. We then sort out our sleeve pieces. They look a little different to your usual sleeve, that is because they also turn into our shoulders. We place them right sides together, matching small dots and notches. We then sew with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. On the longer side, there'll be a small dot and we'll stop our stitching there, back stitching to reinforce it. After we finish stitching, we'll press these seams open. Now the main body of our sleeves is all made up and pressed, we will start on our sleeve facing. First we iron on our interfacing to our sleeve facings. Sew our facings together at the short edges, matching notches and stopping at the marked dot on the angled side of the facings, using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once the seams of our sleeve facings are stitched and pressed open, we hem our sleeve facings on the unnotched side, just by a quarter inch to the inside, to neaten up the inside of our dress, because neat insides are what we are all about.
Then with right sides together, pin our sleeves to our sleeve facings, making sure the inverted notch is lined up. And before we sew, I'm also going to make sure the seams are flat to reduce bulkiness. You can also give the seams a quick trim if you're struggling with the bulk. We then sew together our sleeve and our sleeves facing, starting and stopping at the marked dots using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I found it easier to sew the inverted notch first and start again on the outside edge. We love the pattern hack for the lace up back by our maker Ditasso Fashion by Tanya. Doesn't her dress look to die for and summer ready? We can't wait to see your creations with this pattern. Make sure to tag the pattern so we can see your fabulous creations. We then understitch the sleeve facings as close as we can to the split. We can also top stitch the top band into the sleeve, however I just decided to slip stitch the sleeve facing to the sleeve using the seam allowance. Now we start to insert our sleeve into our bodice. To do this, first we line up our underarm bodice seam and our underarm sleeve seam, and then roll the sleeve first up to the front and matching notches as we go, and then to the back. We then sew the sleeve and bodice together, right sides together using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then we sew again 1 8 of an inch in from the first stitch line and then trim between the two notches. I just want to take a quick break here at the halfway mark to talk about our wonderful community here at Minerva. We really want to encourage everyone to take up something crafty. At the top right of the post, you will be able to follow Minerva and keep up to date with offers, new releases, general fabric prettiness, and of course, tutorials, sew alongs, and top pattern picks. Let us know what you would like to see next. Comment below, we'd love to hear what you think. Now we're starting to get our dress together, we interface our neck facings and sew notch sides together, right sides together. With their right sides together they should make this kind of bird shape. Then exactly the same as the sleeve facings we do a 1 quarter inch seam allowance on the unnotched long side. We 
We then attach the neck facing to the dress, matching everything, notches, dots and seams. Taking the facing piece all along the top, then down into the sleeve seam allowance, stopping at the marked dot. Sew with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. John Caldor, who made the fabric we are using today, is well known for his high quality fabrics that feature bright bold colours and big daring patterns. He started working for Universal Textiles and in the 1970s he started his own textile manufacturing company. He is also a well known artist, making many significant donations to museums and working with artists around the world. We then understitch the facing seam allowance to prevent anything rolling forward. At the bottom of our lining, we now press under by 1.5 centimeters, ready to slip stitch into our bodice. We then base down the center back. We now do a quick and easy slip stitch to secure our lining and enclose all those bodice seams. Duchess satin, like the one we are using today, has been used in wedding gowns for centuries, since it was first imported from China. It is thought satin has been imported into the West as far back as ancient Greece. Satin has a very high thread count and is usually made from silk fibres but it is also made from polyester, rayon or acetate. We now line up the back waist seams, then our back notches and stitch down to the hem, starting at the notch, using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. After pressing the back seam open, we then place in our lapped zip. Firstly, on one side we iron in a half inch seam allowance, and this is simply sewn down as close as possible to the zipper teeth, right side of the zip to the wrong side of the dress. It is thought that Queen Victoria popularised satin for wedding gowns. In 1840 she wore a white satin gown, not only promoting satin fabric, but starting the tradition of white wedding gowns.
Then on the other side, we press in the seam allowance of 5 eighths of an inch. And just that little bit extra makes the lap of our zip. Baste in place first to make sure everything lines up and the lap is nice and neat, then sew down. Today, probably the most iconic satin dress is Marilyn Monroe's shockingly pink strapless gown she wore for her 1953 film, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. In 2010, the dress was put up for auction with an estimate of $150,000 to $250,000, cementing satin as one of the most iconic fabrics a person can wear. To finish our lap zip, we close the zip and then secure the bottom edge with a straight stitch straight across the bottom where the two lines of stitching end. Lap zips aren't like buttons, there's no right or wrong side to have the zip. At the end you should be left with something neat and tidy hiding the zip. As my fabric is so thick, I wasn't able to get my needle to sew through all those layers and the zip. So now I'm just folding the facings in by their seam allowance and hand stitching them down to the inside of my dress enclosing the top of the zipper tape. Now all we have to do is hem, hook and die and we are done. And there we have it, a dress with buckets of personality. Interesting style lines and different features that you just don't find on today's high street. I love the 60s vibe the skirt has. The structure of the fabric gives a fun bell shape to the skirt and the rich colour really shines in the sun and catches the light beautifully. Such a diverse dress can be made for any season with almost any fabric and still look ultra stylish. Here at Minerva, we love to hear your views. What would you like to make with this fabric? What fabric would you use for this simplicity pattern? Any questions, comment below and we'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget, Minerva Craft Club members get 10% discount for 12 months when they sign up. And creating a free account, you'll get a welcome present of a discount coupon. So join us with our lovely community of makers, follow, comment and like. And we'll see you next time.